What's up tribe? Thank you for being here and welcome to my channel. This is another post from Matthias de Stefano's blog, josoy.red. This post is titled The Vision. And as usual, I'd be referring to Matthias as me and to his higher self as I am. I am. Tell me, what do you see? Me. I see what my eyes allow me to see. I am. And are your eyes trustworthy? Me. No, they're just tools that try to do their best to capture the light. I am. And depending on the needs of the environment, eyes, each eye has evolved to capture light in a different way. An insect, a fish, a cat, a human, a bird. They all see differently. Yet, they observe the same thing. What we sometimes take for granted is that the things we see are really as we see them. And we ignore this truth that they are only how we are capable of seeing them. Throughout millions of years of evolution, each organism has used the tool of capturing light as a way to identify the space in which it moves. The eye is a cluster of photosensitive cells that convert light into electrical pulses through the nerves, which carry this data to the brain, which processes this image, depending on the capacity and amplitude of capture of the light ranges that each individual or species possesses, the light will be fragmented and certain waves can be captured, either faster or slower, short or long, allowing one color to be seen more than another. This means that an animal that moves at night has a better light capture, seeing many more nuances than a diurnal animal. Me. Basically, we all see what our ability allows us to observe. I am. Reality is relative to the observer. Everything you see in the world, then, will depend directly on your ability to perceive it. The more limited is your ability to look at the world, limited by your beliefs, by your ideological positions, by your experience, the way you see the world will be very basic and reduced, limited to the things you know, bringing everything to comparison. But if you expand your world, if you open yourself, to new realities, to new experiences, to other ways of thinking, to other ways of acting, then your vision will be much broader, allowing you to integrate a much greater conception of the world, full of possibilities. Me. And how do I see the truth in all of it? I am. Truth cannot be seen. For no I can see everything. Me. Well, everyone says that the one I that sees everything is God's. I am. Exactly. If it weren't because that God who looks, does not have one eye, but so many, that he is capable of seeing everything. Me, how would that be? I am. When the vibration began to expand in the universe, it sought the limits of its space in the same way that the organism sought the space in which it moved. Then, through the appearance of energy, 
she was able to create light, and thus the light generating vibration saw the directions of space. Depending on whether its resonant wave is short or long, the light would show one color or another, like a rainbow. The branching of the colors created a tree of possibilities, and each end of this tree began to search for the light. So imagine that you are a single being who seeks to see everything, but only one eye would prevent you from seeing all perspectives, then that single eye of consciousness first divided into two, one looking towards the light and the other towards the shadows. Thus, the balance was created. This balance made it possible to focus a neutral path in the center allowing beings to build an accurate image of the image of polarities, and these in turn continue to multiply up to billions, each leaf of the tree being one more eye. In this way, the great eye could see more and more. The paradox is that the more perspectives, the better understanding of the truth. Me. It seems counterproductive because there are more conflicts between visions. How does the great I see what is real? I am. Because the eyes that look out expand their vision but do not integrate it. To integrate it The eyes must close and contemplate the reflection within me, the pineal gland, the third eye, the trinity of vision. I am. The two eyes that represent duality focus light and darkness, logic and illogic, free art and exact science, the feminine and the masculine, thus seeking the constant creation of new looks, but but behind both, in the center, the trion image of the essence is formed. In the first place, you must understand what has been said. Everything that your two eyes see is a perception of the external. And what is absorbed by the photosensitive cells and transmitted by the ocular nerves to the brain are simple data like algebra, like Morse code, or the bits of LEDs of the screen you're looking at. The image sent is processed by the brain in a mirrored way in all its senses. The image is assembled inside as an opposite, almost like the negative of a photo, and said negative is assimilated by neurons based on the previous data, quickly comparing this new information with everything previously processed. This generates a selective view in which the highest percentage of what is received is discarded. Since it's considered to already exist in the brain data library, and among those precise existing data, there are the emotional pulses due to previous experiences, something we call preconception, that is a previous concept, a previous fact or circumstance that determines all the following. In this way, our brain evaluates what it receives through its eyes 
something we call prejudice, that is, something that has been considered fair before. In this way, the brain assembles its interpretation of what it sees, so nothing you observe will ever really be the truth. Thus, the third vision, the internal one, is that of the concept, that of the idea. Me, that third concept managed by the pineal. So it's not as many believe the inner truth, but is precisely the idea that one has from the outside. I am. It is very poetic to describe the internal gaze as the real one, but the truth is that the pineal is in charge of regulating the idea, not the truth. For this reason, unity is only possible from the Trinity, from, the, from three points of view. For this reason, the great I is always placed in the middle of a triangle or pyramid. Me, it's the symbol of God, but also of the basic concept of the philosophies that you call masonry and enlightenment, right? I am. Let's save this topic for another time, as it will take us away from today's concept. We will talk about it later. Me, I am fine. I am. The great I, then, is the one who generates the pulses of existence through the triune aspect, vibration, energy, and matter, which will originate the attributes of love, wisdom, and will, which will manifest sounds, lights, and forms, which will then be observed by your right eye left eye, and the pineal. This gland embodies the ideas of the spirit, of the universal mind, descending consciousness to matter. But just as you open and close your eyes, this third eye does the same, closes and opens. Hormonally, this gland is responsible for generating the chemical reaction that makes us sleep and the one that makes us wake up. Biologically, we can see that waking up is inevitable and it is what drives us to seek the light of the day, to move in life and carry out our daily activities. While on the other side, the same gland tells us when it has been enough and we must go to sleep. It warns us through fatigue, exhaustion, our eyes being forcibly closed, that it is necessary to sleep. Well, nobody can live their entire life awake, since surely you did not know it is during sleep, while you sleep, that all the energy you have used during the day is assimilated by your body, nourishing each cell. It is the time when you do not use cellular energy, and therefore they can eat. Your body generates. It is nourished while you sleep. Me. And on the level of the soul, the emotional, how do you live? I am. We call it the dream of the unconscious and the awakening of the consciousness, also regulated by the same gland and its hormones. Pineal comes from the concept pineapple due to the shape that this gland has in relation to the pine seed.
the symbol of the seed represents an ascending and toroidal spiral that opens all possibilities of the soul, being a tree that points to the heavens and therefore related to the divine connection. Therefore, it was interpreted in history that this power center is the one that allows us to connect to the other planes and the divinity, and in a way it does, making us dream in the world of ideas or lower our dreams to reality. But let's get to the basics. Sleep and wake up, as in biology. The soul also needs its waking and drowsy time. You need to sleep. The periods of unconsciousness are for the soul a kind of dream in which it's loaded with experiences through mistakes and successes, living dreams and nightmares. Thus, at the moment of awakening, the power of all that experience is integrated, giving strength to the face of transformation of life. No one is fully conscious their entire life, and what's more, nature does not seek you to be, nor does divinity seek you to be. Sometimes you need to sleep. You shouldn't judge yourself for being sleepy or waking up. It's natural. You cannot judge others for being asleep while you wake up. Me. I always said that those of us who woke up earlier have the responsibility and the loving service of preparing breakfast for those who are still trying to open their eyes. I am. And sometimes many of you are making breakfast haps. <laughs> I am, and sometimes many of you are making breakfast half sleepwalking while many of you walk awake, still living the dream with the pillow stuck in your face. Me, it's true, <laughs> it happens to me sometimes. I am, it's normal in a process as long as life. Opening your eyes takes years. Every day your physical eyes prepare you for that moment until one day you open the eyes of your soul. Me, the soul lives a very long life through many bodies. Is that why we say that our eyes are the windows of the soul? I am. Well, it's poetically accurate. The soul has seen and registered in its energy everything it has experienced, translating it into you in emotion mode. This makes our appreciation of truths from the point of view of the soul, which we could contemplate in the eyes. Me. So, in short, I can't see the truth. I can only see a part of it, a little one. Also, being asleep in consciousness is not as bad as it sounds. It seems that everything we have been told is some kind of hasty lie. I am, in reality, humanity is experiencing an awakening. And those who wake up earlier and see that it's a beautiful day do not want to miss a minute of that magnificent sun. And they want everyone to wake up to enjoy that sun together. What they ignore is that in 12 hours or less, the sun will disappear again and in the evening, returning to night, sleep, and again it will dawn. Me, it's constant. I am, 
It's a big problem to fight for something that is circular, to be linear instead of learning to move with the rhythm of the universe. The need to wake up and be always awake in consciousness is the same as thinking about waking up today and never going to sleep again. If humans enjoy the moment of sleep so much, why can't they enjoy their period of unconsciousness? Me. Today I was telling my friends that something strange is happening to me that has never happened to me before and that is that when I go to sleep I hug the pillow and smile very hard almost even a giggle with happiness. It never happened to me. I am because you are learning to embrace your shadow to live here and now. You always used to live in the future, what your eyes can't see. It's the first time in your life that you appreciate the present, and therefore closing your eyes does not hurt, because going to sleep implies being full in the present. Now, I propose something to you. Stand in front of the mirror and gaze into your eyes, your pupils, Let your perception and preconception show you how your vision of yourself is distorted until you lose the sense of your shape where only your eyes remain. Lose the notion of forms and ask yourself, what do I see in myself? Can I smile at what I see when I look in the mirror? Do I accept what I see? What are the distortions that I do not accept in myself? They are only in my mind, and what I cannot accept in what I see are the preconceptions and prejudices that I have in what I see, my ideas of how the world should be, not how it is. Me. Many times when I look at myself, I don't accept many things from my body, my hair and my belly are the two things that are the most difficult for me to accept from them. I am, and why? Me, because it was an aesthetic issue, but now, being more aware, I understand that I deny so much of what I have in my mind, what I know, what I think, about what I have in my head, always hoping that be better to be able to do it in the best way, judging what I do as useless, that I have projected all that in my hair and on the other hand I see emotions as impediment despite manifesting myself very mentally. I am too emotional and I have not managed to manage the things I feel much, release them, which sums up my vision of the belly. I am, in other words, your brain observes these two aspects as negative Because there is a preconception of never being what is expected, of always looking for something better. And you see emotion as an impediment to achieving it. Me, I do. I am. Now that you have seen him, you make him aware. And every time you touch your hair, you tell him about your awakening of consciousness about your ability to live in the present. And when you caress your tummy, you tell it that emotions are the tools you will use and you are just trying to understand how and the usefulness of each one. Talk to your body. Your body is not real. It is what your eyes see of it. Change your inner vision and what you see will change. Me, it's a long way to awaken consciousness. It's to accept that the alarm clock has sounded. We all have a hard time getting out of bed. I am. Nobody demands that you get up. The spirit is only showing you that it is a beautiful day outside. And that breakfast is already served. Me, I open my eyes 
and I see the sun. I project a new vision on the day that begins. I am, so have a very good day.